What's going on guys? Apex season 22 is about to drop and there are a ton of changes that are happening this season and some of them are pretty insane. So I'm going to break down everything that you guys need to know in this video right now. So let's get into it. First off, one of the biggest additions is a brand new map called E District. This nighttime map focuses on verticality and will feature 17 unique POIs and several ways to navigate the map, including jump towers, gravity lifts, and zip lines. From the trailer, the map looks pretty nice. I just hope that it plays as good as it looks because we all know what happened with Broken Moon. Okay, let's get into the quality of life changes coming to the game this season. These are going to be all of the things impacting the game as a whole. Two of the classes in the game are getting major overhauls. Controller Legends will be seeing a crazy buff starting with receiving an extra 25 shield as long as they play in the zone. This is going to reward teams for scanning and rotating early, and it also means Controller Legends will automatically have blue shield if they begin the game in the zone. Don't worry, this doesn't exceed the normal red armor, so they will still max out at 125 shield. The overcharge is lost if they leave the zone after 5 seconds. The second buff to Controller Legends allows them to remotely pick up any undamaged tacticals, such as Watson's Fence, Caustic Traps, Rampart Walls, and Catalyst Spikes. Recon Legends are also getting buffed this season. All Recon Legends will have threat vision when ADSing, meaning that enemies will be highlighted. This ability doesn't work through walls or smoke, and it's dependent on the distance and level of optic being used by the Recon Legend. There's also some various changes, including scanning beacons faster, Beacons only scanning 500 meters around the beacon instead of the entire map, and beacons are no longer randomly distributed at the beginning of the game. Instead, all beacons are activated each game. Scanning a beacon is only going to give you 75 EVO now instead of 200, but there's going to be more available on the map, so I think this is a good balance. Beacons will also scan three times over a 15 second period after being used. And finally, scanned enemies will also appear along the edges of your minimap. These next changes are going to be some of the biggest to the quality of life for Apex. Aim Assist has finally been nerfed. This change only applies to controller players on PC, with Aim Assist being adjusted to point 0.3 from point 0.4. For console players playing in console lobbies, they will still have point 0.06 Aim Assist, but will also be dropped down to point 0.03 when cross-playing into PC lobbies. Aim Flinch has been removed from all weapons and almost all abilities in the game. Players will still receive Aim Flinch while taking ring damage. This one's pretty interesting because I know we all hate getting aim flinch while fighting, but removing it entirely isn't something I really had on my Apex bingo card. Loot bins are being completely reworked. Starting next season, all open loot bins will reset when ring two fully closes, allowing underlooted teams to have a chance to stock up before the end game. When the loot bins reset, some of them have a chance to be converted into gold loot bins, which will contain smart loot, and one will spawn in as a mythic loot bin. Mythic loot bins contain a care package weapon, a gold version of a weapon that the squad is already using, meds, grenades, and experience for the entire squad. Mythic loot bins also do not open instantly and require a small amount of time to open and are displayed on the map for everybody in the game to see. Death boxes have been reorganized finally, with shields and meds being at the very top instead of being buried at the bottom. This is a big W. Okay, there's definitely going to be some mixed feelings about these next changes, but let me know what you think. First, enemy players will now have their shield and health displayed above their head when you damage them. This does require line of sight and will disappear about one second after you stop damaging the enemy. Additionally, enemy players are now highlighted red, similar to the way your teammates are highlighted blue. I don't really know how I feel about this change until I have a chance to get into the game and actually test it out. They've added new indicators and notifications when you or a teammate are low on a certain type of ammo and they change the ammo stacks. Feel free to pause the video right here and you can look at the new stack sizes. There's also a new player experience being added for any account created after the launch of this new season, which includes a welcome pass with different rewards and will allow the player to unlock new legends while progressing through the pass, which is pretty neat. They also got rid of that stupid bug that causes you to fall when climbing in the exact same spot as your teammate. Okay, now for the good stuff. Let's talk about all of the weapon changes coming next season because there's a ton of them. Our gold weapons for this season are the R301, the Rampage, the Sentinel, and both the Mozam MP2020 Akimbo versions. Yes, Akimbo. I'll talk about that in just a second. The EVA 8 returns to floor loot and is being swapped out with the R99 with its damage being increased and it's also going to be receiving the boosted loader. This thing's going to be gross. Akimbo weapons are here. There were some leaks about this for a long time, but they finally added them to the game. You'll be able to dual wield the P2020 and the Mozambique. Aiming Akimbo weapons tightens the hipfire spread, and attachments are mirrored on both weapons. Additionally, the weapons will have an increased fire rate, longer reload, and double the magazine size. You can also toggle your fire mode to disable the Akimbo mode and re-enable your optic. LMGs are also getting buffed this season. 
They're all going to benefit from the reverse hip fire mechanic that we saw in the care package devotion, which means the longer you fire it, the tighter the hip fire gets. All LMGs also receive a new hop up called the gun shield generator, which will give them a small shield similar to Gibby's passive. This gun shield stacks with Gibby's arm shield. So I think we're about to see a lot of Gibby players using LMGs next season. Alternator and Car are both getting their magazine sizes buffed. Feel free to pause the video here to see the exact numbers. Devotion received a buff on top of still being in the care package, which is terrifying. It reloads a little bit slower, but it has the gun shield hop up added to it. Also, had the shots required to achieve max hip fire reduced to 14 from 21. Flatline received a nerf to its magazine size, which makes me sad, but the Havoc had its hip fire accuracy reduced, so that makes me happy. It looks like Respawn was as tired with the Hemlock Havoc meta as we were, because they also nerfed the Hemlock. They increased the delay between bursts and nerfed the white and blue mag sizes. Purple is unchanged. P2020 had its damage increased, but the hammer point damage decreased. Mag size is significantly reduced, but you'll have double when you use the akimbo mode, so I guess this makes sense. Mozam had hammer point damage reduced as well, but base rate of fire increased. Bolt fire rate decreased at all levels. Massive and PK both got a buff and a weird change. Both shotguns had their damage per pellet increased, but the number of pellets decreased. They also changed the blast pattern for both shotties. At least you won't have to worry about hitting nines with the PK anymore. R301 had all of its mag sizes increased, same with the RE45. And lastly, the Rampage had its projectile size increased when it's revved up. Ton of weapon changes, which is great in my opinion. I felt like every single person was just using the Havoc and the Hemlock and it was getting pretty stale. Now we have our legend changes and let me tell you, I think we're going to be seeing a meta switch up this season. First up is Alter. They made some various changes and improvements to Alter's ult. You can pause here if you want to see all the specifics, but basically it's more reliable now. They also swapped up her perks a little, giving her the option to access ring consoles and removing the unlimited ult lifetime. Ballistics Whistler now has a 0.1 second lock on time and Caustic's gas traps are now green if they're friendly. I think we could be moving into a crypto meta because these patch notes are wild. His drone now has a 30 second cooldown to respawn instead of 40 and a brand new perk called Off the Grid, which makes crypto invisible while piloting his drone. Yes, invisible. While cloaked, he'll make a cloaking sound to allow enemies to find him and he can still be scanned and located through other means. Crypto's ult will also scan every person hit by the ult for 4 seconds and it tracks through walls. Improved handling is included in the base kit and will not require a perk anymore. Lifeline's care package will no longer contain an evo cache and instead will be replaced by a battery. And Rampart got a nice little change. Essentially her ult will now work similarly to Vantage's and will replenish ammo over time instead of needing to use all the ammo or place it on the ground to start the cooldown. Seer is receiving a buff, and I hate saying that. Seer's tactical will keep health bars on the player for the entirety of their silence. Passive move speed is now the same as weapon sprint speed. Passive is quieter, and he also has a new perk giving him two charges for his tactical instead of one. Gross. These next two legend changes are wild, you guys. Vantage no longer requires LOS to launch to Echo. You can cancel your tactical mid-charge, and Vantage will attempt to slide around boxes and other obstacles to reach Echo. Her ult will now deal 125 damage on the second shot instead of 100, which means you can two-tap somebody that has blue armor. Vantage can also ping enemies that are over 100 meters away, and that enemy will remain tracked for 10 seconds. The tracking ends if the enemy is closer than 100 meters and is calculated for each teammate individually. Vantage can also use ultimate accelerants twice as fast as she used to. I think we might be seeing a lot more Vantage players next season, which I think is pretty cool. Watson is also getting buffed as well. Her pylon will now recharge its capacity over time and her perks give her the ability to increase the speed and HP of her pylon. You can pause the video here to see the various bug fixes and our maps for this season are E-District, Broken Moon, and Stormpoint. I'm 100% sure that people are going to be screaming about this one. But remember, you can play all of the maps if you join me on stream for Apex Custom Lobbies. Hi, friends.